billionaire businessman Dan Gilbert is speaking only on CBS this morning about tackling some huge challenges. Gilbert, who owns the Cleveland Cavaliers, founded Rocket Companies, the parent of the mortgage giant Quicken Loans. In 2010, Gilbert moved his business headquarters from the Detroit suburbs to downtown. His companies have since acquired and developed more than 100 properties to help transform the Motor City. Today, he's announcing a $500 million initiative to revitalize neighborhoods in his hometown. CBS This Morning Saturday co-host Dana Jacobson sat down with Gilbert and his wife in their Detroit area home nearly two years after he suddenly became ill. Dana, good morning. Good morning, Anthony. Dan Gilbert has always been a determined self-starter. As a kid, he bought candy wholesale and sold it to his friends for a profit. As a teenager, he made Chef Boyardee pizzas in his mom's kitchen and started a delivery service until the health department shut him down. But when this hard-charging entrepreneur had a stroke nearly two years ago, everything changed in an instant. I'm feeling good. I'm getting better. It's like an inch a day, you know. It's a marathon, this thing, coming back from it. Dan Gilbert. Welcome to Detroit, everybody. The charismatic billionaire who built a mortgage lending empire and owns the NBA's Cleveland Cavaliers is still recovering from the stroke he suffered in May 2019. It was long enough already to have a baby. It's been nine months. <laughs> a journey that's taught him the importance of gratitude. In that moment where you realize this has all changed, what is that like for someone like you? Yeah, it's very scary for anybody. And you start to appreciate everything and everybody much more than you ever did. Humbling? Yeah, it's definitely humbling. You said that just everything is hard when you have a stroke. Right, that's the problem with it. Half your body is, is gone. In my case, the left half. Luckily, I'm a righty. Gilbert remembers his near-death experience vividly. That night, there happened to be a light show on the river. All of a sudden, I started seeing double vision. I thought it was because of the lights. And luckily, one of our good friends who was there happened to be an ER doctor. I mean, how about that for luck, huh? Incredible but luck. He made sure, we, and my wife as well, made sure we went to the hospital right away. His wife, Jennifer, has been by his side throughout his recovery. Yeah, when you have a stroke, it's like the whole family had the stroke. It changes the whole dynamic. It does. But I, I will say that, you know, in a crisis, our family rallied. Has the battle to come back been tougher mentally or physically for you? I think it's been tougher mentally. It plays with you because you always ask yourself every day, Am I, is this ever gonna be over or not? And you hope it will be. But even in the midst of his challenges, Gilbert remains committed to his decade-long mission to help revitalize Detroit. We need to gain momentum. We need to have a lot of companies that want to be there because it's smart for them to be there. We'd like to see the people of Detroit benefit I mean, you look at the energy level downtown right now, we've got to carry that through to the neighborhoods and have the whole city have that energy. So Gilbert and Rocket Company's CEO Jay Farner are announcing a new initiative to invest $500 million into Detroit's neighborhoods over the next 10 years, using the first $15 million to relieve property tax debt for homeowners. It was very clear to us that it was property taxes that caused the majority of the blight in Detroit. And the vast majority of citizens at one point or in tax foreclosure. With interest and penalties, that debt kept building. In some cases, more than they owed on the mortgage and people would just walk from the houses because they just couldn't afford it anymore. That money will cover everyone in the city that's delinquent? It'll Literally. cover about 20,000 homes, okay. probably 40,000 or more family members. The idea here was how do we really A, stabilize the families in Detroit and then B, start creating wealth. And the first thing you need to do is make sure that people have a, a place to live. To make sure they understand what the community wants, Jennifer Gilbert participated in listening sessions in Detroit's neighborhoods, which are about 80% African American. Probably the worst thing we could have done is had everything figured out and written a check. So we did a lot of, of listening. And there are people that look at it sometimes that it's, here are these people from the suburbs, white people coming in to change a black community or save the black community and we don't need saving. Are you sensitive to that? How does that even make you feel when that is raised? Well, the more you listen, the more you learn, and the more you realize you have to learn. As long as we continue with that philosophy and we stay close to it, um, and we stay close to the people and the communities, we can't help but have a, a positive impact. We're empowering the people from within the communities 
to come up with the solutions. Whether it's rebuilding Detroit or recovering from a stroke, Gilbert says he's learned a big lesson. America loves a comeback story, right? <laughs> you already knew that with the Cavs, come on. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Has there been a lesson learned here that you would pass on to other people? You know, I would say it's just the old cliche of the only thing that matters is your health and your loved ones. You can't control bad things from happening, but you control how you respond to them. And so for us, it really is it's just being mindful of how can we make the best of this situation and how can we find moments of joy. Gilbert says that the stroke also taught him that he doesn't have to be the one to do everything, learning to rely on family at home and his team at work. At the time when we spoke a few weeks ago, he was going into the office twice a week, still using a wheelchair, and said he was doing physical therapy three to four hours almost every day to regain strength and movement. Tony, two things that need no rebuilding, his fighting spirit and his that. sense of humor. Yeah, yeah you well, see that. definitely came across, Dana. That was a beautiful yeah. piece. Thank you very but much. But you can also tell how, how hard a battle is for someone as much of a, as a go-getter as he is. Yeah. He, that's a big wall to climb. I, mean, I just think that some cliches are cliches because they're powerful and true. And the, the, the importance of gratitude, how family takes yeah. center stage when your health falls away, all these things are just fundamentally right and true. And we need reminding. But to go through all that, I have to confess, I didn't know that it even happened to him. So uh, it's so good to see that he's going to be okay, he seems to be okay. Yep. But even in the middle of all this, that he's yeah. still trying to figure out how he can help other people, that's extraordinary. And Jennifer Gilbert, I thought what she said was so important that she decided to listen. Yes. Because sometimes you think if you have a lot of money, I can show you what's best for you. I can go in and fix this. I can fix it, but to yeah. listen to what the what the people want and how it benefits them. That's, that's always it's yeah. critical. So smart like to that. do. But it's it's great. It says a what lot about doing. them as a couple. Great what they're doing for Detroit. Exactly. Thousands of people could benefit.